Hey, how you doing? Me? Well, honey, I'm just fine. Today, we're gonna be playing with the synthesizer that initially I only took interest in because of the font, colors, and design. Like when you look at the size of this thing, you're just like, well, this is probably just like a Korg Volca or IK Multimedia Uno synth with a way better build quality. It's USB powered, it costs under 600 bucks. It's probably not a fully featured analog polyphonic synthesizer. And if you saw this and you thought that, You'd be wrong, stupid, because this thing sounds like it's maybe this big and weighs as much as, I don't know, like an old DVD player from the 90s. Or maybe it's the weight of like an old DVD player with one or two of your mom's two pound weights on top of it. But nope, it's about the weight and size of a, uh, I don't know, just look at the thing. This isn't a fucking podcast. So here we have the Dreadbox Nymphs, and we're gonna be looking at what's inside of this feminine Stranger Things-esque design, which by the way, I am not making fun of at all. Like I mentioned earlier, the aesthetic is what drew me to it in the first place. This is a 100% analog synthesizer, except for the reverb. It's not spring reverb, it's a DSP chip, but it does have mono out, and I'm usually hooking something up to a reverb pedal or a reverb unit on my end of chain anyway, so the reverb sounds pretty good, but I'm not really concentrating on that all that much. And it is polyphonic, and like many poly individuals that I've met in my life, it told me that it was poly within the first 10 seconds of meeting it. <laughs> it has six voices, two envelopes per voice, one LFO per voice, and then one master LFO. It has a monosynth mode, a duophonic mode, a triphonic mode, two unison modes, and of course a polyphonic mode. There's both a waveforming oscillator and sub oscillator per voice, as well as a noise generator. There's a 24 decibel low pass filter that definitely has some bite as well as a six decibel high pass filter. It is USB powered. It has mono quarter inch out, mono 3.5 millimeter headphone out, and it has MIDI in either via D5 or USB. One thing to mention is that if you plan on powering this with one of your computer's USB ports, it might be very noisy. And this isn't a Nymphs thing, this is just a USB thing since it wasn't really designed for audio. You could sometimes fix this by plugging it into a powered USB hub and having it be the only USB device plugged into the hub, or even better, you could get a USB splitter slash ground loop adapter. Expressive E, the same people who make that awesome Touche MPE controller sells these splitters for $15. I've seen them for six or seven bucks on Amazon. However, I have no idea how well those work. Or if you want, you could even take a USB cable and modify it to cut the ground. And there's a bunch of tutorials online that tell you how to do that. Speaking of noise, let's go make some. So this is Nymphs, and I really want to give Dreadbox some props for not only the design of the synthesizer itself, but for the design of the packaging. I just really liked it. In that box also came a nicely designed card, and there's also a nice manual that explains what all of the submenu items do. And probably not to the enthusiasm of Dreadbox, I haven't even glanced at it because I really like just having a good old organic user interface experience. And so far, the relationship between the menu here and the shift key and the user interface has all been pretty self-explanatory. And that's a really good thing. And if I do have to get up and get that card at any point while making this video, you'll probably hear me complain about it. Something I did read up on though was the most recent firmware update, which adds things like MPE and polyphonic aftertouch support, among a whole bunch of other features. So let's just dive in. So let's start off with the oscillators. One of the first things I wanted to hear was the quality of a fully analog oscillator from a USB powered synthesizer. So this is just a triangle and we could morph that into a square and then we could morph that into a saw. Nice. And so if we were to just keep this as a saw, we could also bring in a sub oscillator. And then we could also bring in some noise. So right now this oscillator is six voice polyphonic. But if we want to change that, we could go to menu, select one, hit that again. And now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And let's uh, just make it mono. So we'll go right to six here and then press okay. And now we have, right now there's no glide on it. So if we hold down shift, you see glide right here. And now there will be. Make that a little bit more manageable. We could also hold down shift and detune it. So 
So if I hold down shift, it controls the VCA's envelope. So. And now we can play with our low pass filter, which in my opinion is an excellent sounding low pass filter. Turn up the resonance a bit. All right, now turn up the filter envelope and then adjust that accordingly. Now this has a mono output, but there's actually a mono reverb here, so let's try that. Rad. All right now let's go to menu mode and choose unison A. Let's make it polyphonic. Let's add an LFO to the pitch. <laughs> go to random, turn it up a bit. Make it sound like a tape. Add some more reverb here. We could also have a high pass filter. Press menu and select LFO2. These sliders set the LFO2 modulation destinations and amounts corresponding to either shift on or shift off perimeter. Okay, and apparently if I want to reset all modulations, I just hold down menu for one second. I feel like I probably could have spent another few seconds trying to figure out the LFO2 thing before running to the card because it actually was kind of exactly how I thought it would work, but I just didn't mess with the controls enough to actually hear a difference. All right, so I'm going to try and fuck with this chord creation feature here. Uh, I'm going to go to menu, mode, select chord, and then... <laughs> Okay, and then I could scroll through these chords by holding shift and chord. And then I assume that they just work like this. Cool. I know that I can sometimes get excited about a piece of gear and be guilty of hyperbole from time to time, but is it just me or does this little setup here sound like a $4,000 polysynth with the footprint of like a loaf of bread? <laughs> Let's add a MIDI looper.
I don't really see a purpose in talking anymore, so I'm just going to make some music. I just got an idea. What if we take the square wave and the saw wave of the nymphs and drive it with this, creating a more dynamic and possibly polyphonic acid house. So my little acid house party idea did not really work out that well due to the TT-303 not being able to shift an octave down on the MIDI out, and it was just outputting a very high bass tone. And then the Nymphs doesn't really have the option to just pitch everything down an octave or two in the general settings. I absolutely love the bass bot. It is my favorite TB-303 emulator. However, I am going to put the blame on it here because asking a analog polysynth to shift down two octaves or something like that is pretty much asking for tuning issues. At this point, I did a lot of manual reading on both of them, and I couldn't get the slide to translate from the MIDI out of the TT-303, so let's just agree that these two individuals are not going to get along very well. And that's okay. By the way, this is what the bass bot pattern sounded like with the bass bot output. <laughs> Ultimately, I'm very happy with the character and richness that comes out of the Nymphs, and I am absolutely blown away when you look at the size and footprint of it. But if you're into a portable setup, it actually is pretty exciting to add this to something like an iPad or a PolyN Tracker, or even something like a Native Instruments machine or an MPC Live or an MPC Force, where you could feed it back into the FXN, and that pretty much completes that setup on a very portable scale. I am a fan. I'm keeping her. I imagine that if you just look at it, the price tag may seem a little bit steep, but $600 for a six voice analog polysynth is um, good. Come to think of it, it's actually a little surprising when you consider that Dreadbox is a small boutique company and we're in the middle of an electronic component shortage. And that is all for today. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you liked this video or if you learned anything, subscribe to my channel. If you want access to a bunch of unreleased music and audio assets and samples, and pro audio coupons and even some giveaways and access to an inspiring productive community full of creators and musicians that do monthly songwriting challenges then my patreon is for you and you can sign up for as little as one dollar a month later bye